In this video, I'm going to show you how to mechanically interlock TS-8s using 4912 kits and 4911 kits. Now the 4912 000 is the kit that's used in the master or the main cabinet, typically a flange mount disconnect or a rotor or through the door disconnect, if you've got other cabinets made to it. The downstream cabinets or the slave cabinets use 4911 000 if they are single door or 4911 100 if they're double door cabinets and in a double door design you just get twice as many of the parts that are highlighted here. The tools that I'm going to use, cordless screwdriver, tape measure, a T25 Torx bit, I've got a socket and a ratchet, I've got two uh, sockets, one of 8 millimeter, the other one's 13 millimeter nut driver and my instructions. So in the main cabinet or the master cabinet, what I've done obviously for lighting purposes, I've taken off the roof, taken out the mounting panel, okay? So my first bracket that I'm gonna place, it tells me to count two holes over to place this bracket. So there's no measurement given at this point, it's just counting holes. So I have the bracket and M8 bolt. You'll notice on the back of the bracket there's two tips that help locate and index the part into the frame. And so I put my M8 threaded block into the frame. Now I'm doing this by hand. You could use a tool. I like the sense of touch when you're doing the uh, threading of the nut and the bolt combination so you're not going to get it cross-threaded. And then when you want to come back in later with your uh, ratchet and your socket, that's... The extension helps a lot here too, and so just tighten it up a little bit. Now you don't want to over torque, um, and on the other hand, you also don't want to leave this loose. If it's too loose, it's not going to work properly. Now the next bracket it's asking me is to really count two of the larger holes on the door frame. And so going from the right side to left, I'm going to place this bracket right over that second large hole using T25 self-tapping screws, then I'm just going to place that right into the door frame. Notice that these brackets, the majority of them are slotted, and that's going to allow me some adjustment later on. Within this system, you're going to do a lot of fine tuning, a lot of um, uh, manipulation uh, to make sure everything's working properly, a lot of moving parts when we get to the end. So now moving on down to my downstream cabinet or my slave cabinet, this next bracket that we're going to install, they're going to have us measure from the edge of the frame over 193.5 millimeters. So inside of the frame over 193.5 millimeters. So we're basically going to install the same bracket as we just did in the master. So yes, I know my tape measure is upside down. I know it's in uh, centimeters, but you know you can make it work. And so I'm going to come out 193.5 millimeters, make my mark, and I know that that's where I'm going to place this next bracket. And it's right over a larger hole location. And so using the bracket that we did before, uh, very similar to the front cabinet, there you're going to have your M8 bolt your M8 threaded block, so the threaded block goes in, insert the bolt, get the threads lined up, start to tighten it down, and again I want to make sure that the two little indexing pins on the back of that bracket seat properly into the frame. That gives us a nice fit that's not going not gonna to pivot. Now the next thing you'll notice is that tip on the threaded block, there's actually a part of that that's hanging down. That's going to get in our way later. Those are actually designed to break away if they're going to be in the way or you just don't like the look of them, then that gives you a nice clean path right there. The next bracket, according to the instructions, is going to be 387 and a half millimeters down from the center line on the door frame. So the right side door frame, the center line. Now what's kind of cool is my tape measure, obviously I can put the end of it right in the slot, which is the center point of that frame, and then come over 387 and a half millimeters and make my mark. And that's going to be the position for the right side of my L bracket. 
Now, these probably aren't the right technical terms. I just use them because it's a good descriptor or it, or it tells you what the part does. So I'm taking this L bracket, put it on the stiffener or the door frame. Two self-tapping screws go into place. I might look a little clumsy right now just because, you know, I'm trying to do this and not get in front of the camera and, you know, so tighten those down. And we'll see how this comes into play later. Now, the other thing with a lot of these parts, there's not a particular order like this one has to be installed before this one. Okay? Uh, I'm just following the instructions. Um, so, you know, again, if you get out of order, it's not a big deal. Now, the next bracket we're going to place tells us to refer to page 6 for the measurement. So I go back to page 6, and it's showing me a measurement of 175 millimeters from the small hole right next to my bracket over. So the next smaller hole is my starting point, center point of that. I come over 175 millimeters and I make my mark. And that again is going to be the right side edge of the next bracket that I install. Now look guys, you know we're getting pretty precise with you know um, 175 and 387.5 millimeters etc. You know what if you're a hole location to the right or to the left it's not going to throw you off. It's not going to not work. Okay, so I'm going exactly as the instructions tell us to do it. Uh, many times in the classes that I teach, you know, we kind of eyeball it. We just know the arrangement of the parts, and it still works out fine. So the next thing I want to do is kind of a function test. I want to make sure that the L bracket that's on the door engages with the flapper. There's another technical term the flapper in the piece that I just put on the frame. Now the next thing is there's really no dimensions or, or measurement given on this. I just want to make sure that this catch that I'm putting on the door and it screws to the door frame, I want to make sure that it is right behind as much as possible the bracket that's there on the frame. This is part of the mechanism that's going to help that door stay shut when it's supposed to. Again, two self-tapping screws, T25s, put that into place, everything's good. Now I'm going to assemble basically the hook mechanism. So I've got a longer bolt. I'm going to thread that through a collar, and then through the cylinder that's on the hook, and then into a second collar. Feed it through the other side of the bracket, place a nut on the outside. Now you don't want this tight. This has got to have play in it just like that for it to work properly. So you don't want to tighten that down too much. Now I've moved back to the main or the master cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and through, uh, I'm sorry, thread the, the rod through the bracket there. This one I'm using is a 4916000. They're sold in packs of 10. This is a 600 millimeter long uh, bar, but you can get them in 800 millimeter lengths or 1200 and cut them to size. So you notice that I put a spring on, and now I'm going to put on this block. Now the block, I refer to them as single and doubles just because of the number of screws that they have on the bottom. So I'm going to call this one a double block. And I want to make sure that the door mechanism engages with that properly. And you can see here that I need a little bit of adjustment, so I'm going to, I'm going to move that up just a little bit to get that into a lot smoother operation. So I've already done that. And I'm looking now at the mechanisms as they're lined up properly. So I'm going to feed this back through. Now, the only thing I've actually tightened to this point is what I just did in the master cabinet. Everything else that I do, I keep loose until the end. Inevitably, you're going to end up moving or adjusting something. So now I've just put a block with two screws on it or a double block on first. And now I'm coming in with a single block. And I turned it to the side. And the reason why I did that is the form factor that it presents on its side gives me a better chance of engaging with that flapper when it's supposed to. So now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to put another tapered block or a single block on right under the hook mechanism. And this is what makes that move. It is tapered, right? So it, the taper goes from the high point on the right down and slopes to the left. That's going toward the main cabinet. 
So I'm going to position that. So since my doors are open right now, I want the hook in the raised position. So this I will tighten down just a little bit because as I move this stuff, I don't want it to move around the rods. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in and just real gently kind of tighten these up just so they're seated properly. And you can see that the double block is on either side of the main bracket in the, in the main cabinet. So the idea is when the flapper is out of the way, the rod can move freely, raising and lowering the hook in the downstream cabinet. The purpose of that flapper, when it's down, it's to create an interference so that rod can't move. So if we look at this from the outside, with the flapper out of the way, the rod can move and the hook can fall or the hook can rise. You can see this from another angle. This is what keeps the downstream doors locked from being uh, prevented from being opened. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a different way. I'm going to go around and simulate what should be happening. If this is all installed properly, this is how this should work. I'm trying to open the downstream door and with the master door closed I cannot open any downstream door. This is to simulate the power being on. With the power turned off that allows me to open the master door. That action moves the rod system and now allows me to open downstream doors. Doesn't matter how many I have downstream they all have become unlocked at the same time. I should not be able to close the master door now with any downstream door open. And you can see now the flapper is causing an interference and I cannot move it. So closing all downstream doors, move the flappers out of the way, then allow the rod to shift, allowing me to close the master cabinet. This is in accordance with UL 508A. Again, in the lock position, I should not be able to open downstream doors. Power off, open the master door cabinet. Now the rods have shifted and I should be able to open downstream doors. Returning to the master cabinet, I should not be able to close that door with other doors open. And you can see here that I cannot. Closing the downstream doors, the L-bracket pushes the flapper out of the way, creates a clearance. Now I can go back to the master door and shut it. That allows me to turn the power on. So now you can see that you cannot energize the cabinets with any of the doors open. If I want to extend my system down to multiple cabinets, you simply take the last part of the rod from the end of your system, put a double connection block on, feed another length of rod, and then just continue the process with 4911s as long as you want to go.